Well, I'm David Sippet, President of the Grove Consultants International, and I'm really happy to be presenting at Pegasus this year. Um, I've heard about Pegasus and followed it for years, ever since attending systems thinking workshops back in the 70s with Peter Senge and Innovation Associates. Um, as some of you may or may not know, um, myself and the Grove have been pioneering graphic facilitation for years trained lots of people and now it's a field of visual practice that has many many practitioners and you've had graphic recorders at the Pegasus conference before maybe even some presenters. And what I'm going to be presenting about this year is uh, my new book with what John Wiley and Sons called Visual Teams. And here's a picture of the cover and the subtitle is Graphic Tools for Commitment, Innovation and High Performance. And my thesis um, in this book is that um, not only is graphic thinking essential for team performance in our times, but it is the doorway into systems thinking and may even be the essential language for, for systems thinking. And since many, many of the problems that we're facing these days are system level challenges, uh, this is a pretty important thing for teams to get straight. Uh, it's also a fact that a lot of the organizations that we're working with uh, are working virtually now, where teams are distributed, people are working globally, and in those kind of situations where you have even less information about the other person, um, you need to have more robust language that allows you to, to talk more effectively. Now, what do I mean by this hypothesis that graphic language and systems thinking are kind of connected? Um, if you actually think about when people use the word system, um, in listening to, to folks, I think they tend to, to say, well, these are systematic, or it's a system level problem, or we've got to deal with this uh, in a systemic way. Uh, what people mean is you need to take into account those things that are connected in ways that we don't necessarily experience directly. So, if you, for instance, go into a restaurant, a restaurant's a whole system, but you only experience uh, maybe the front area where they have people seated, you don't experience the kitchen. Unless you go back and remember what the kitchen's like, then you've got the food distributors, you've got all kinds of other elements of that system. Well, how do you know it's a system? Well, you create a mental model in your mind uh, and register these different experiences, and then you can think about the interconnections. Um, in the mid-70s, I was an internal organization consultant for the San Francisco Foundation, and um, Innovation Associates came and actually ran a systems thinking workshop. And I was fascinated that the very first thing they did was teach us causal loop diagramming. Now, causal loop diagramming is where you have a stock, you know, like uh, a sales force, and they then affect, you know, the, the products that they're selling. The products are affected by the, the price. Um, and these arrows are called flows, and the different interactions are coded, whether, whether they're plus or minus kind of a, a support. Now, this causal loop diagram was developed to think about open systems and botany, but it's become one of the primary languages of systems thinking. If you look at the different kinds of archetypes that are set up, they're often expressed this way. Um, I was fascinated that the first thing they did in this workshop was teach us how to do this diagramming. But they didn't talk about it as being group graphics the way I was used to working with it, or as graphics at all. I mean, it was systems thinking. Now, I've noticed that in the systems world, people who focus on that will focus on the systems thing, and they always draw pictures. People who are in the graphic facilitation visual practice world always talk about the graphics, but they are actually getting people to think systemically. And often the, the link isn't explicit. Well, that's what I'm going to explore in my talk, which is what does it mean for a team to be a visual team, to work like designers, and have a graphical user interface that not only allows them to think about the team process, but to explore the system level challenges that they need to think about. Now, for those of you who are familiar with uh, the Grove's work and tools, uh, we've developed um, a pretty systemic understanding of visual language. And I've had an insight in the last while that these different formats for graphics are actually different kinds of ways of thinking systemically. And I'll just give you a couple of examples here and then I'll elaborate on it um, at the conference. But one example of a way of thinking, of course, is this, this one, a causal loop diagram. And that is uh, called a diagram in our system and it means uh, 
that stuff's interconnected explicitly. Now, Tony Buzon says that uh, our minds are wired this way and that we think in terms of mind maps uh, and branching diagrams. But it's not the only way to systematize. So, for instance, a very common way of systematizing is to just put things in a list. And lists are common throughout the computer world as menus. Many people you know, run organizations just based on to-do lists. Um, it's not a, a form of organic structure. Uh, it's a linear kind of symbolic structure, but it is a form of system. Um, if you take and uh, just use a bunch of sticky notes, sticky notes would be an example of a cluster form of organization. And a cluster form of organization is where you just have several different things that are close to each other, but no connections. And what's interesting about this form of system is that it actually invites the viewer to add in the interrelationships. So it's very, very useful for brainstorming or being creative because the viewer themselves are adding in what they're imagining to have happen and uh, seeing the connection between these things. Now, it's interesting that these two forms of systematizing your thinking represent in some ways the way we think about time and the way we think about space. And this is pretty fundamental. Um, I'll just end with uh, the, 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 what I'm going to spend more time on, which is that humans who are thinking about systems in more workaday ways, say you're on a team and you're working on implementing something, uh, a big way that people understand things they don't know is they analogize or they compare what they do know with what they don't know. And I found out that if you apply graphic metaphor systematically to drawings, you actually can take something like a causal loop diagram, list, or cluster, and convert it into uh, something that's animated by the metaphor. So instead of just looking at an abstract causal loop diagram, you could actually look at the causal loop diagram as though it were some kind of a tree where the interactions between the different elements are mapped into what we understand about living systems as a tree. Now, graphics, as any scientist knows, or analogies cut both ways. But uh, it's quite possible to teach people to be literate in this. And what I found is that teaching people graphics um, as an interface to working in teams is actually one of the most accessible doorways into very practical applications of systems thinking. So I look forward to seeing you at the conference. I think it's going to be a good one. And um, I'll enjoy going into this in more detail.